Hello, hello, Keisha Johnson here. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning into any of my videos for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so we can welcome you. We want to know that you're here. Again, my name is Keisha Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us as we are reading through the One Year Bible together. We are finishing this year strong, or if you are just finding us, you can jump right in. If you've fallen off track, it's okay to begin again. It's okay to begin again. So come on in, check in, say I'm here, and let us know where you're tuning in from. Go ahead and say I'm here. I just want to say God did it again. It's a great day to be alive, and I am so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Amen. So come on in, check in, say I'm here, let us know where you're tuning in from. Begin to drop those light bulbs in the comments, type in hashtag, I will read my Bible. You all know what to do because we are going to do just that. And the uh, word of God tells us to do the work of an evangelist. You all have been doing amazing at um, helping to spread the word of God. So after you've shared the broadcast, go ahead and type in hashtag shared. Grab your Bibles, grab your journals, grab your water, and I think that's it. And uh, we'll just begin with the time of worship. I came on uh, just a few minutes early to give you all some time to come in. So we'll get started in just a moment. <coughs> it is cold this morning. I woke up this morning like, woo, it feels colder than it was yesterday. How is the weather where you all are? Is it cold? Is it hot? Is it just right? How is the weather? We'll get started in uh, about two minutes. So come on in. Great morning. Great morning, Delane. Good morning, Dorita. Yes, I'm here. Say I'm here. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Good morning. Good morning. That's my highlight. Oh, here we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Bernadette. It's beautiful where you are. God, thank you for allowing me to see another day. Amen. So y'all go ahead and um, begin to type at least one thing in the comments that you're thankful for. So, what is the other thing? Ephesians 1. Good morning. That's another um, Bible. Thank you. Good morning. Come on in, everyone. Good morning. Yes, we got up. Amen. God's grace and mercy. Amen. Yes. His mercies are new every morning. We are thankful. Good morning, Natasha. Great morning. Don't forget to share after you've shared. Type in hashtag share.
Great morning, Sheila. Good morning. Yes, thank you for a sound mind. I'll type in the comments what you're thankful for. So, Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are God and you are good in every way there is to be good. And we just want to say thank you. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for another chance. We're so thankful for another chance to get it right. We thank you for protecting us through the night from things we have no idea you've protected us from. Y'all type in the comments, God, I thank you. We're not asking for anything on today. We just want you to know that we love you. We appreciate you. We're so thankful for everything that you've done for us. And I haven't asked you all this in a while, but I want to ask you this morning, what if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What would you have? What if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What would you have? Somebody type in the comments for me. God, I thank you for everything. Just cover everything. We thank you for everything. It's so important for us to stay in a constant state of thankfulness. You know, that kind of helps, especially when we're going through things, just stay in a constant state of thankfulness, just thanking and praising God for every little thing, every little thing. Amen. So y'all, again, after me asking you that question now, type in at least one thing in the comments you're thankful for. Yes, God, I thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And um, you all are always asking, if someone can type the name Julie True in the comments, that is the name of the lady that we're listening to, Julie True, J-U-L-I-E, True, T-R-U-E. -E. And this one is from 2019. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. So again, my name is Keisha Johnson. Welcome. We are so glad you're here reading through the one-year Bible with us. You could have been doing anything else right now. You could have even been sleeping, but you chose, y'all type in the comments, I chose, you chose to get up, right? You're alert, you're awake, you're not coming and dragging, you're giving God your best today. Even if you need to go splash some cold water on your face, go and do that. The machine is driving by, they have been doing road work for almost two weeks now. And you're alert, giving God your best. Yes, I already see you started. Let's see some hearts. Celebrate yourself for showing up for yourself. <laughs> Celebrate yourself for showing up. Celebrate yourself. You pushed past all excuses, even that I'm tired. I can do this later in the day. It's so early. Why do I have to read my Bible right now? It's not a big deal. It doesn't matter what time of day. You pushed past all of the excuses. So celebrate yourself for showing up because it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Somebody say it's a big deal. All right, so let's dive in. Um, for those of you that may be new, we listen and read at the same time. I get this question a lot. Um, hang on. Is this Kelly? Okay, I was like, there's two Kellys. Which Kelly? Good morning, Kelly. Um, cause I know one, one of our sisters, Kelly, she is still in the hospital. So you all just the name Kelly, lift her up in prayer. Um, because she's usually so consistent, so faithful. And whenever, um, there's someone that's been really consistent and I don't see them, you know, it's only the right thing to do is to, to kind of reach out. And then when I didn't see or hear anything, um, I began watching her Facebook page and saw, um, that she's in the hospital and began praying, but I don't have any of any other contacts to reach her. So um, let me just say, all right, so let's go ahead and dive in again. Thank you so much for joining us. We read and listen at the same time. Um, Want to make sure you're actively listening. Be ready to share your takeaway. Good morning, Sister Robin. Be ready to share your takeaway after we are done. At least one thing um, that you can take away. And let me get out of the way and let's just press play. Good morning. September 28th. Our reading in the Old Testament today will be from the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, beginning at verse 1. We'll go through Type chapter 
number two, seven, if the volume is okay. 14. And we'll see the future regathering and restoring of Israel. It's a picture of the uh, wonderful changes God makes when trials and sufferings end. And by the way, yes, they do come to an end. The barren woman gives birth to so many children that the family tent must be enlarged. Our trials widow, come to an end. And is wed once again. There we this go. This time to Jehovah himself. Thank you, Peggy. The storm is over and God gives peace. And the covenant sign of the rainbow is in the sky. The yeah, times of chastening your suffering may seem spiritually barren to you, but God uses them give birth to blessings Ooh, yes. times of sorrow and reproach of course are painful but they can lead to greater joys That's storms true. can be frightening but they polish god's jewels His birthday and bring is him it. glory it is painful to go through the furnace but god uses the experience to make you a stronger and better tool my friend the best is yet to come and then as we move on into Chapter Say the best is yet to come. And the prophet depicting the changes God makes in the lives of those who turn from their sins and trust the Savior. From substitutes to reality, the law sinner is bankrupt because he spends all he has for what cannot satisfy. When you hear God's word and obey, well, you start to enjoy the water of life and the bread of life found only in Jesus Christ. And you turn from death to life. Jesus is the fulfillment of the covenant God made with David. When you trust him, come. you share in his life and his victories. All that Jesus is and has, Amen. you are and you have. You are fully inheriting the I'm kingdom. I'm trying to see whose birthday is today. Guilt to pardon. When the sinner repents and turns to Christ by faith, well, God shows mercy and grants pardon. But don't delay. You're turned from fear to certainty. God's ways are beyond man's comprehension. But you can be sure he is accomplishing his purposes in his times. They always. Like the rain and snow seems to be wasted. God accomplishes by his word, his will on the earth. And then you're turned from wilderness to paradise. Huh. Sin turns the garden into a desert. But grace transforms the desert into a joyful and fruitful garden. Abundant satisfaction, pardon, and joy are available to all mm. who accept God's gracious invitation. So right, I've that, accepted the invitation. Our reading today in the Old Testament. September 28, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1, through chapter 57, verse 14. Sing, O childless woman, break forth into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem, even though you never gave birth to a child. For the woman who could bear no children now has more than all the other women, says the Lord. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will take over other nations and live in their yes. cities. Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Huh. The shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood will be remembered no more, for your creator will be your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. He is your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back from your grief, as though you were a young wife abandoned by her husband, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with great compassion, I will take you back. In a moment of anger... I turned my face away for a little while. Okay, for a little but while. With everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, Good morning. says the Lord, your Redeemer. Just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth and destroy its life, so now I swear that I will never again pour out my anger on you. For the mountains may depart and the hills disappear, but even then, I will remain loyal to you. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. Say thank you for oh, your mercy. Storm battered city, troubled and desolate. I will rebuild you on a foundation of sapphires and make the walls of your houses from precious jewels. I will make your towers of sparkling rubies and your gates and walls of shining gems. 
I will teach all your citizens, and their prosperity will be great. You will live under a government that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away. You will live in peace. Terror will not come near. If any nation comes to fight you, it will not be because I sent them to punish Terror will not come near me. Your enemies will always be defeated because I am on your side. I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge and makes the weapons of destruction. And I have created the armies that destroy. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. Hmm. And everyone who tells okay. lies no in weapon. court will be brought to justice. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink, even if you have no money. Come, take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen, and I will tell you where to get food that is good for the soul. See, I get to enjoy to the benefits. With your ears wide open, listen, for the life of your soul is at stake. I am ready to make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the mercies and unfailing love that I promised to David. He displayed my power by being my witness and the leader among the nations. You also will command the nations, and they will come running to obey, because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you righteous. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the people turn from their wicked deeds. Let them vanish from their minds. The very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God. For he will mercy, Lord. Turn. Have mercy my on me. My thoughts are completely different from yours, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The rain and snow come down from Am the heavens frozen? and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. Yes, it Lord. It will accomplish all I want it to. Yes, and it Lord. will prosper everywhere I send it. Yes, Lord. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap okay. their hands. Where once there were thorns, cypress trees will Say, grow. Say, I will live in joy and peace. Where briars grew, myrtles will sprout up. This miracle will bring great honor to the Lord's name. It will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. Be just and fair to all, says the Lord. Do what is right and good. I am coming soon to rescue you. Blessed are those who are careful to do this. Blessed are those who honor my Sabbath days of rest by refusing to work. And blessed are those who keep themselves from doing wrong. And my blessings are for Gentiles too. They commit themselves to the Lord. Do not let them think that I consider them second-class citizens. And my blessings are also for the eunuchs. They are as much mine as anyone else. For I say this to the eunuchs, who keep my Sabbath days holy, who choose to do what pleases me and commit their lives to me. I will give them in my house. Say, I will do what pleases the Lord. A memorial and a name far greater than the honor they would have received having sons and daughters for the time i have given them is an everlasting one it will never disappear i will also bless the gentiles who commit themselves to the lord and serve him and love his name who worship him and do not desecrate the sabbath day of rest and who have accepted his covenant i will bring them also to my holy mountain of jerusalem and will fill them with joy in my house.
house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. For the sovereign Lord, who brings back the outcasts of Israel, says, I will bring others, too, besides my people Israel. Come, wild animals of the field. Come, wild animals of the forest. Come and devour my people. For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds, are blind to every danger. They are like silent watchdogs that give no warning when danger comes. They love to lie around, sleeping and dreaming. And they are as greedy as dogs, never satisfied. They are stupid shepherds, all following their own path, all of them intent on personal gain. Come, they say, we will get some wine and have a party. Let's all get drunk. Let this go on and on. And tomorrow will be even better. The righteous pass away. The godly often die before their time. And no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For the godly who die will rest in peace. Say, I will not die before my time. Come here, you witches children. You offspring of adulterers and prostitutes. Whom do you mock? making faces and sticking out your tongues. You children of sinners and liars, you worship your idols with great passion beneath every green tree. You slaughter your children as human sacrifices down in the valleys under overhanging rocks. Your gods are the smooth stones in the valleys. You worship them with drink offerings and grain offerings. They, not I, are your inheritance. Does all this make me happy? You have committed adultery on the mountaintops by worshiping idols there. Good morning. And so you have been unfaithful to me. Behind closed doors, you have set up your idols and worshiped them instead of me. This is adultery, for you are loving these idols instead of loving me. You have climbed right into bed with these detestable gods. Mm-mm, say forgive you me, Lord. You have olive oil and perfume to Molech as your gift you have traveled far even into the world of the dead to find new gods to love you grew weary in your search but you never gave up you strengthened yourself and went on why were you more afraid of them than of me how is it that you don't even remember me or think about me is it because i have not corrected you Mm. that you have no fear of me Mm. Now I will expose your so-called good deeds that you consider so righteous. None of them will benefit or save you. Let's see if your idols can do anything for you. Mm. When you cry to them for help, Mm. they are so helpless that a breath of wind can knock them down. Mm. But whoever trusts in me will possess the land and inherit my holy mountain. I will say, rebuild the road. Clear away the rocks and stones so my people can return from captivity. Say, forgive me, Lord, and ask him to help you identify any idols in your life. September 28th. Is it food, social media, shopping, whatever it is, and repent. Our reading today will be in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 24. We'll see that spirit-filled Christians will manifest Christ's likeness in the home, on the job, and on the battlefield of life. Listen, the bottom line here is if we don't learn to obey at home, we're not likely to be uh, obedient on the job or in the army of the Lord. Mm. In the same way, if we've not learned to take orders, we will not be too successful at giving orders, either as parents or as employers. Mm -hmm. The danger in the home is parents who are authoritarian. But do not exercise loving spiritual authority. The danger on the job is the employee who is a a clock watcher and uh, does not obey from the heart. And the boss who forgets that he is second in command and must one day give an account to the Lord. And the danger on the battlefield is that we do not take the enemy seriously Mm. and so fail to put on all of the armor. Listen, that used to be me. Armor through prayer. Which must be done at the beginning of every day. Hey, do you have your armor on right?
right now? Listen, never underestimate the strategy on. and strength of the devil. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the New Testament. Listen, say, I will take the devil seriously. I will take the enemy seriously. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 24. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of the Ten Commandments that ends with a promise, and this is the promise. If you honor your father and mother, you will live a long life full of blessing. And now a word to you fathers. Don't make your children angry by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Work hard, but not just to please your masters when they're watching. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. Yes. Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, yes. whether we are slaves or free. And in the same way, you masters say, I will do the will of God with enthusiasm. Right. Don't threaten them. Remember, you both have the same master in heaven, and he has no favorites. A final word. Be strong with the Lord's mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies and tricks of the devil. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. Use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil. So that after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Put on salvation as your helmet. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power Stay of the Holy Stay alert. Watch Stay out. alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. And pray for me, too. Ask God to give me the right words as I boldly explain I God's secret the plan that the good news is for the Gentiles, too. I'm in chains now for preaching this message as God's ambassador. But pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Tychicus, a much-loved brother and faithful helper in the Lord's work, will tell you all about how I am getting along. So I am sending him to you for just this purpose. He will let you know how we are, and he will encourage you. May God give you peace, dear brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God's grace be upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Say God's grace is upon me because Psalm I 7, love him. Verses 1 through 5. You know, David was in a hurry when he wrote this brief psalm because God so was good. not in a hurry. Three times he cried, make haste. And he ended with do not delay. Like Peter sinking into the water. He didn't have time, you know, for a long prayer. All he could uh, cry was, Lord, save me. Mm. Why does God delay answering your prayers? Surely he can see your desperate situation. Anybody else he ever had that pray that grace prayer? Grace to help me, in time of need. That can be translated grace for well timed help. Listen, your father's timing is never wrong. When God waits, he may have a better gift for you than what you're asking him for now. His delays are neither denials nor defeats. Come on. So put your times in his hands and wait on the Lord. He'll say, I will wait on the Lord. Psalm 70, verses 1 through 5. 
for the choir director, a psalm of David, to bring us to the Lord's remembrance. Please, God, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. For they said, Aha, hmm. we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness. Amen. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, God is great. God is but great. I am poor and <laughs> Please hurry to my aid, oh Type God. Type that in the comments, God you is great. You are my great. helper and my savior. Oh Lord, do not delay. Proverbs 24, verse 8. A person who plans evil will get a reputation as a troublemaker. Hmm. Let's see some hearts for the word. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, we let everybody say amen. Can anyone else relate to that? Having no time for any other prayer, but Lord, save me. Like, act on my behalf. Do something. And that's all you have time to pray. So that's why I was just like, oh, I can totally relate to that. I don't know about you, but um, I have found that we can always somewhere, like we can always find our voice somewhere in the book of Psalms when we're reading. We can always find our voice somewhere in the book of Psalms. We can, I either pray that prayer, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> you know, we can always find our voice um, in the book of Psalms. So y'all go ahead and begin to share your takeaways. We have something to talk about today. And so I didn't even think to ask this question, but the question is, have you put on your armor today? Have you put on your armor today? Have you put on your armor? Listen, and if the answer is no, it is okay. The great thing is you get to do that like right after we get off of this video. We read through um, the strategy of Satan by Warren Wearsby. Why? Because we are dedicated Christians, right? What did we say as we were reading? Y'all type in the comments, I am a dedicated Christian, right? And we are committed to living in victory. And that's how Warren Wearsby opened that book. He said, this book is not for everybody. Listen, there was a time when that book was not for me. I had that book for at least a year or two there listen y'all there are several books that I had in my possession that just were not for me it was not my time to read them and as I began like reading certain books and going to my bookshelf I'm like oh I got this book oh there were so many great books but it just wasn't my time it just wasn't for me at that time but I thank God that's one thing I can say. When I got serious about wanting knowledge and understanding, of course, reading the word of God is always first and foremost. But reading great books by great, you know, Christian authors. And like, listen, I don't just read any old book. And one thing you will know about me, I do not share a book. I do not recommend a book unless I've read it first. And that's just that's just how it is, because um, when I first started doing like my book studies and my book club, um, starting back in 2017, people would recommend books and I would recommend them. People that write books would start sending me books and I would recommend the books before I read them. And I learned the hard way. Do not do that because there were some questionable things in some of the books, not necessarily those that people may have written, but those that people have recommended. So I have this thing. Do not eat. Don't even don't ask me don't message me and ask me to share a book and people get mad people get offended like i've been following you i've been sharing your videos i've been supporting you and you won't share my book absolutely i will not not until i've read the book and so that's just that's just that's just that's just what i felt led to do i always read the books first and again I that that's because you know I take this platform and what God has given me even any groups that I run very very seriously I used to let people just share all kind of videos all kind of church flyers in a group and then questionable things started showing up and now I don't do that unless I've watched a video first and if people don't like that then you don't then you just don't like that but I'm not changing that because someone gets uh, upset or offended that's just what I felt like God led me to do and um, because you know you just don't know not everybody's 
not and that's not to say I know everything and I have it all together and I'm trying to make my page and my group and everything else about me that's not what it is at all um I just you know it's just for everybody's protection but anyway so that's why sometimes you all will message me why can't I share my church's video um I have to watch them and I don't have time to watch all yet so anyway um I just wanted you all to know um that books that I recommend I have personally read so you can trust my judgment when it comes to books which you all usually do I share a book y'all run and get it and I love that um because that says that you trust me trust my judgment or more so trust the God in me let me put it that way so we read through the strategy of Satan so if you read through that prayerfully um you are still practicing putting on your armor every day because there was a, a whole chapter on that and the importance of us putting on our armor and see these are things that I heard I thought oh think we've read it and we don't think you know and here's the thing that's that's why we have to be thankful you know because there was a time where my understanding was darkened and I didn't really understand and really get it but now I'm like whoa wait a minute we cannot listen hit the ground running we are soldiers in the battlefield. We just cannot run out there unprotected, not fully dressed. So I want to challenge all of us that are on here, everyone. And I say us because I want to make sure I'm not pointing the finger at you. Let's challenge ourselves to make sure that we're putting on the armor every single day. Can I see a hand raise if you are up for the challenge, even if you're already doing it and you're going to continue? Let me see some hand raises if you are up for the challenge because, again, let me just let me just get on track here so what I wrote down is we're gonna spend some time today let me back up even more y'all type personal de I was like wait a minute no one's taking a challenge um, y'all type personal devotion oh let me um, y'all probably have to try to find the hand raise emoji just type me in the comments let's keep it simple if you're up for the challenge just type me so you don't have to search for the hand raise the, the emoji um, so let's spend some time today meditating on the armor of God, asking God to show you just how important it is to make sure you are putting on the armor every single day. Just like we get dressed. Listen, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, you know, jump out of the bed. I wouldn't jump out of the bed and show up on this live naked with no clothes on. So just as you are putting your, we can keep it as simple as, as you are putting on your, 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 your physical clothing that you can get dressed spiritually at the same time time you can put it on as you're brushing your teeth however whatever you need to do and I always say whenever you are trying to create a new habit if you're trying to create this new habit of putting on your armor attach it to a habit that's already so you have a habit of getting dressed put it on as you're getting dressed you have a habit of brushing your teeth washing your face you know do it at that time attach it to a habit that you've already created and that makes it a lot more simple to start a, you know start a new habit so I want to read this quote so we're spending time meditating on the armor of God which means we'll be reading Ephesians 6 10 through 18 again and just meditating on it and spend some time thanking God for his faithfulness so those are the two things we'll be doing during our personal devotion and really I just added um, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal any idols to you to help you to identify any idols that are in your life and repenting and um, just asking for forgiveness um, for that so I want to read this quote that Warren Wearsby wrote Warren Wearsby says sooner or later every believer discovers that the Christian life is a battleground and not a playground I need to read that again because my prayer is for you all that it's sooner rather than later because for me it was later rather than sooner but that's all right um, so sooner or later every believer discovers that the Christian life is a battleground and it is not a, a playground and I lived most of my life thinking it was a playground play 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 casual about the things of God didn't take the enemy seriously almost didn't even believe he was real because people kind of teach you things like that um, and so because of that I'll say again I experienced many many casualties um, because of that so my prayer is that it is sooner rather than later for all of you that are watching so I wanted to give you all something to kind of think about so we read again today about all the six pieces of the armor 
playground, battleground indeed. Yes, we read the heart, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, and the shoes of peace, right? So we read about those six pieces of armor today. So I want to kind of, I made um, s some little bullet points on how to use the armor. All right, so how to use the armor as we're putting it on. So I think there's like one, two, maybe three bullet points for each one um, that I wrote down really quickly. So how we start our day is so important, right? And I'm realizing that more now than ever before. How we start our day, y'all type in the comments, how I start my day is so important. And we're doing a wonderful job at how we start our day here, you know, as we're waking early for his glory, right? So the belt of truth. So, start your day in the Word of God. Y'all say, I got that covered. Start your day in the Word of God. Not only start your day in the Word of God, let me slow down. Are y'all with me? Can someone type in the belt of truth? So, as I read each armor, if someone can type in the comments, the belt of truth. So we want to start our day in the word, end our day in the word, and begin to memorize scriptures. And how you can start that is by memorizing scriptures based on the lies that you believed. And like I shared, you know, we make up, we, we, we come up with the excuse, I want to read the word, but I don't know how. We, I want to read the word, but I don't know where to start. So my suggestion is always, even if you're not following a Bible reading plan, start with whatever you're suffering with, whatever you're being tormented by, whatever lies you're believing. So if you're struggling with depression, go find Google every single verse that you can find to help you with that. If you're dealing with sickness in your body, Google and find every single verse and start there. So start your day in the Word of God, in your day in the Word of God. And how I do that, like each morning we sit and we read. A lot of times in the evening, I'll kind of sit and reread, maybe not the whole day's reading, but um, maybe part of it, sometimes the New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs, and kind of really just rereading when ending my day. Um, or sometimes, um, most oftentimes, I'll start even reading the next day's reading, and then I'll kind of know what um, I'm supposed to be talking about or start writing, jotting down little things to talk about the next day. So how we start our day is important. How we use the belt of truth. Um, so we pray and he also said, we put on the armor through prayer. You put on each piece each day, every single day and how we use it and why it's important, right? So the belt of truth, start your day in the word, end your day in the word. And if you're not already, begin to memorize scripture based on whatever lies you're believing. I'm not worthy. I'm not enough. Whatever the lies are that you're believing, go and Google, find the truth, and begin to memorize that and meditate on that. Does that make sense? Does that help him? So y'all type in breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate, breast, breastplate of righteousness. So I'm just kind of talking about how to use the different pieces of armor. Breastplate of righteousness. Um, and so we know the breastplate, right, um, protects, protects all the soldiers' vital organs, right? And so, yes, we know that physically, but the same spiritually. And so whenever I'm putting that on, I'm like, Lord, protect my heart, right? Protect my heart from any fiery darts, any arrows that the enemy may be throwing at me. You know, help me to manage my emotions and to keep my, you know. And so it's different how you pray when you put on pieces of armor. is different for everybody. Um, and so the breastplate of righteousness, identify the righteous activities in your life that strengthen you. And then spend some time identifying the unrighteous activities in your life that weaken you. Yes. All right. So y'all are with me. I want to make sure I'm not talking too fast um, because I talk fast when I get excited. So the third, the gospel of peace or the sandals of peace, the shoes of peace is, is different for everyone. So the first one is... And I had, this is something I began to practice and I feel like I've gotten really good at, I would say, um, but it's sharing your testimony with others. And I say I had to practice that because I didn't always do that. I was a very, and this came from, you know, that whole 
um, people call it like the whole big mama, what goes on in this house stays in this house. That's a spirit that ran rampant through my family. Like that's why we had so many family secrets. And my grandmother, my grandmother literally took so many family secrets to her grave. Listen, it's a lot. And I was just like, I will not die with these secrets. I will not die with these secrets. I will not die with these family secrets. Um, and so let me reel it back in. So share your testimony with others. And then the second thing that you can um, begin to do is be a living example. And I try my best to be a living example. All right. Are y'all with me? Y'all got it? And so let's move on to the shield of faith, right? Faith, is, and it's y'all type in my faith is a shield. Our faith is a shield to every believer. So I have um, one, two things that I wrote down here. Number one, take time to remember the promises of God. That will help to strengthen your faith. And that's why I always say, Lord, may I, number one, may I not forget your promises, but may I never forget, which goes into the second thing I wrote down, recount your past victories in your life. Like I will never, I'm like, Lord, help me to never, never forget what you've done for me. That's why I talk about it so much. And so when I talk about my past and what God did back then, it does not mean that he is not moving and doing things now. I never want to forget. Yes, I, I remember we know what God is doing now and we can thank him for that. But I don't ever want to forget what he's done in the past because that helps to build me up and strengthen me when the enemy comes to try to discourage me. Right. And try to. And then he does that. That listen, that's the one thing that the enemy uses to try to beat me down with is discouragement. And that's why I always get so um, excited about just reading a word because I'm always encouraged. Right. The word that's listen. All right, let me back up. So take some time to remember the promises of God. And I wrote down a couple of scripture references that you can start reading and start meditating on. Um, if someone can type this in the comments for me, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Can I see some hearts if y'all are still with me? Deuteronomy 31, 6. So read these today or tomorrow or over the weekend if you have time. Philippians 4, 19. Philippians 419 and then um, Proverbs 3 5 through 6 Proverbs 3 5 through 6 and so it's so important for all us to always remember what God has done I'm like Lord may I never forget what you have done y'all type that in the comments Lord may I never forget what you have done may I never forget what you have done so always spend some time recounting and thinking about your past victories I'm like what is that noise outside the window all right now y'all type in the helmet of salvation y'all type in the helmet of salvation a soldier's head is the most vulnerable area right and so we must make sure that we're putting on the helmet of salvation and for me I'm always asking God right to help me to to um, protect me from the lies of the enemy right the fiery darts that the enemy wants to send because that that's a, a real battle for me right well and I wouldn't say it is now but it definitely was more so at one time um, just the, the the lies that I struggled with um, and so the helmet of salvation um, Did I get all of them? So we went the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, gospel of peace, shield of food. Helmet. Okay, so I'm right. So, okay, I was like, and then, did I forget something? So the helmet of salvation. And so I wrote down, place your thoughts on the things above and not, on, not um, place your thought on things above. So how, I'll say that simply. Um, I shared with you all that I always, um, that I began sleeping with um, my ear pods in my ears always having an audio bible playing something else that will help always listening to sermons different christian podcasts doing whatever you can do to keep your mind on things above and i know i shared that with you all a lot um so you probably already knew that so it's so important for us to make sure um that we protect ourselves you know protect our thoughts 
Um, and so the sword of the spirit and all the other pieces of armor are defensive pieces with the exception of the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Um, and so I wrote down a couple of bullet points. Arm yourself, so be intentional and be ready. Um, when attacked, we fight back with the word, right? We fight with the word. You do that too. We fight with the word. And when beaten down with the enemy, that is when we immerse ourselves in the word. And that is an example of what I was sharing with you all. It was like an immersion. Like I was immersing myself day in and day out constantly. Like when I tell you all, that was all I would listen to. I would have it playing in the background. I know I shared this with many of you that have playing in the background. Yes, sleeping with the word of God, just really immersing myself in the word of God. And that's why I get so excited about the word. Because listen, the word is life. I can honestly say the word of God, like me digging in this word and immersing myself in the word. People thought I was crazy. I can still remember my friend Rochelle, um, a good, good friend. She's not with us anymore. Um, it, she, I, t I think I shared with you all that she had cancer and I even shared that how I just knew. And that was in that season where I was immersing myself in the word. I was like, I feel closer to God than any, like I am his favorite. I know he hears me when I pray. And so I continued praying for her, praying for her. And I believed with everything in me that she was going to get up off that hospital bed. And the doctors were going to say, we don't know what happened but the cancer is gone, right? I just knew. And so when I got that call that day, I was crushed. I'm like, wait a minute, how could this have happened? Um, and so I kind of had to work through that, like what happened, Lord? Um, and so um, she would laugh at me, like, what are you, that is that, that what is, like, she would laugh at me, um, not being mean, but make fun of me when, um, when it just, excuse me, during that season that I was in and I always get so emotional thinking about that but people didn't understand like no one understood that I was literally fighting for my life literally when I tell you all, I was literally fighting for my life the voice of the enemy was definitely louder and that was my way of drowning out the voice of the enemy I was like God I need your voice to be louder right i need your voice to be louder because right now the voice of the enemy is louder you know what's the point of being here nothing is going to ever change you know why don't you and, and 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 i will say that the the spirit of suicide the spirit of depression all of those things listen they ran in my family but somebody type in the comments until it ran into me. And so those voices were very, very, very loud. And again, I can look back and say, and I'm not saying, um, and I'm just talking now. Are y'all still with me? And I'm not saying that, you know, medication and things like that. If you are struggling with depression, anxiety, and all of those things, if you are on medication, right, continue taking it. But I knew for me. Um, number one, I knew that it wasn't for me, right? And so I remembered um, them putting me on medication and how it made me feel. It made me feel like a zombie. Like, like, I, like everything around me was moving so fast. I was moving in slow motion. I just can't even explain it. And I remember saying, no, God, like, I cannot do this. And that's all I remember is all different kind of medications that my mom was on, sleeping a lot. We would go to school. She was in a bed, come home. She was in a bed. And I was just like, I don't want to be like that. And I felt like that was, and I said, no. And I began to immerse myself in the word. So when I tell you all that, um, and it wasn't until just this past year that I really got the revelation behind the scripture that said in Psalm 119, 130, the entrance of thy word brings light. And how when I began to just constantly immerse myself in the light of God's word, immersing myself through listening just all day long, that the light began to drown out the darkness and all of a sudden one day y'all type in the comments all of a sudden one day things weren't so dark anymore right things weren't so dark anymore and you know that cloud that spirit of heaviness that cloud of depression is so dark and one day i was just like i can see right i 
and see. Does y'all that may not make any sense to y'all? <laughs> Listen. And so when I say a lot of things that are y'all still here? Can I see some hearts? A lot of things that we are struggling with, a lot of things um, that the people of God are with that we're we're afflicted in different areas. It really truly and that's how you can really truly see that people just aren't reading their Bibles, right? And that's why it's so important for me. And listen, y'all take advantage of this because this accountability may not always be here. Who knows what God is going to do? Right now, it's like, oh, that's just Keisha 430 reading her Bible. Listen, don't take advantage of this time that God has me showing up here in the mornings, holding us accountable to be in his word. Don't take this time for granted, right? Don't and, and we do that, especially when it's something we don't pay for, right? And I've learned that people don't respect things that they don't pay for. Not everybody. Sometimes they don't take things seriously that they don't pay for. It's like, oh, I can show up when I want to. It's no big deal. No, it is a big deal, right? Um, and so anyway, that's why, you know, I don't play around. I know. And so when I said I got the really got the revelation behind that, and so sometimes people message me about things. My question would be, do you read your Bible, right? And it's not to offend anyone. And that's usually their first response. Like, what do you mean do I read my Bible? Do you read your Bible? Like, when is the last time you read your Bible? And that's all an honest question because then from there, I can know all you need, just, you know, you just need a little bit more light. And just, you know, even if you don't want to um, do commit to a Bible reading plan, start with this situation right here that you're struggling with. You go to the Word of God to see what the Word of God says concerning that and start there. And I can guarantee you, if you continue meditating on that, taking that word, of, because it is medicine, three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening, just as you would have to do if you were on medication, I guarantee you, your life will begin to change. That situation will begin to change. And so I, and that wasn't just something somebody told me. Like, I experienced that. Like, things begin to change when I began digging into this word. Y'all, listen, is this helping anybody? Am I, I feel like I'm just, just going, just rambling right now. But, um, yeah, I used to pick my Bible up. I used to be so desperate. I would be crying like, Lord. I would pick my Bible up like I want everything that's in this word. Can you just dump it inside my head? <laughs> I would pay some crazy prayers. I would sleep. <laughs> I would sleep on my Bible at night. Like forget a pillow. <laughs> forget, I don't even want a pillow. This is my pillow. I would sleep. I'm telling y'all when you're desperate, desperate people do desperate things. And people didn't understand. And that's okay because they didn't have to understand. I knew. <laughs> right I, they people didn't understand and that was okay but um anyway so listen that's why I don't play around like listen I get excited and I can get excited because I know what the Word of God has done for me or right and so anyway and even with looking at it like these are not just words on a paper right this is literally every time we open up our Bible we are fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus Christ himself, right? Because the word of God tells us he is the word. Y'all say he is the word. So we're not just reading. This is not just ink on a piece of paper, right? We're literally fellowshipping with the word um, as we're reading. So y'all, I was so desperate. And, and then there were things that I thought I had to do. I know now that I don't have to do all that, but I didn't know then, right? I was just so desperate for God, just so desperate so desperate just so desperate and uh yeah so anyway yes he is the word y'all type in he is the word he is the word <laughs> all right um did y'all share your takeaways in the comments or were y'all listening to me did i get through everything did i get through all six pieces um i think i did and i don't know i think i kind of just stopped <laughs> stopped writing but um i think i shared everything i wanted to share i understand i still place my ah uh, okay <laughs> all right so you get it you understand i guess it doesn't seem so crazy but yeah i was just so desperate in every waking moment 
Ugh. I remember. Can I type in the comments? She remembers. I'm like, Lord, may I never forget. And no one understood, but it's okay. Y'all type in, it's okay. They don't have to. They didn't have to understand. That was between me and God, right? They didn't have to understand. But I know one thing because of all of that. That's exact. That's that's why I'm sitting here right now. And I just thank God for not allowing the enemy to have his way with me. Because when I tell you he thought he had me, but God, right? He thought he had me, but God. And so my sister, like my sister, she's the middle sister. I, I said, you know, she she was she died way too early, way too early. Didn't even live, didn't even get to live life right she didn't even get to live life and i'm like man you know the enemy wanted to take me out in that same way and so when i look at family members i can see how he literally tried to take each and every one of us out one by one by one by one through sickness through disease through sexual perversion through um different kinds of addictions um alcoholism through drugs you know all of these things literally like dominoes trying to take every single one of us out and listen when i say i thank god because i could have been strung out on drugs strung out on alcohol out in the street sleeping with whoever whatever and i'm not gonna lie i went through that season not because i wanted to but i i let me just not even not because i wanted listen that's a whole nother story we don't have time for that but listen, I listen. Do y'all not understand? I thank God for it. Listen, <laughs> this could have been another way. But God, it could have went another way. No protection, and I didn't die of AIDS. I don't have H. Like I'm like, I know. Even then, I didn't see it, but I can see now. The Lord's hand was on me from the very beginning his hand was on me from the very beginning and everything that happened he allowed it for a reason everything that happened he allowed it for a reason because the women if i think i'm helping women now <laughs> if i think i'm helping people now this is just the tip this is just the, the little snip snip snippet of listen we're about to be women all over the world, free, set free. When I tell you, God is doing something. He is doing something. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm not even doing anything right now. Y'all type in the comments, you're not even doing anything right now. You're just getting ready, <laughs> right? You're, you're just getting ready. This is just a warm up. <laughs> this is just a warm up. This is just a warm up. So anyway, I pray that y'all were blessed. I gotta go. It's 5.30. Um, y'all help me make sure I'm off of here at 5.25 every morning. So I need a timekeeper. Because once I start talking, and I lose track of time. But all is well. I'm gonna hop off now. Listen. This, this Exactly the dress rehearsal, right? Just the dress rehearsal. Just the warm up. Just getting started. But I'm excited because listen, when I look there, too too many people in my family died way too soon. Died. Listen, that's why I said this morning when we were reading, I will not die before my time. I will not die before my time. Y'all type in the comments. I will not die before my time. I will not die before my time. My husband will not die before his time. My children will not die before their time. I will not die before my time. It will not happen. It will not happen. It will not happen. It will not happen. I will not die before my time. And so, and so, I was about to say something else, but I have to hop off of here. I love y'all. I pray y'all were blessed. I pray y'all were blessed, at least one of you. <laughs> and I'll see y'all tomorrow. You too. Yes. And if y'all haven't already, make sure you put on your armor. And I'll, and I made a note. So tomorrow morning, I will remember to ask you all, did you put your armor on? So when y'all come in tomorrow, check in and let us know, did you put your armor on? And I made a note so I would remember to start asking you all about that. Um, put your armor on, right? And so, um, listen. All right, bye, y'all. Let me go. That's right. I will not die. I will live a long, satisfied life. Y'all listen. <laughs>
Yes. You haven't been getting your alerts. I'm not sure why. Um, but Robin, when when I end this video, go to um, I have to go for real now and drop that the drop down and make sure that you turn off the notifications and then turn them back on. Facebook is doing something funny, but I gotta go.